the human emotions. Well, we're all just supercomputers anyway. I guess in a way. I mean, it seems like it's a pretty easy way to just sort of say, this is exactly what I like, don't like, and what I want, and they could just ship it right to your door. Amazon could deliver it with a drone. I don't know. I guess I'm old-fashioned, but people should, you know, get a life, not really <laughs> date robots. All of a sudden, the computer goes down, and he's got to go to the hospital. <laughs> the time being embarrassed and showing up at the emergency room <laughs> with a robot attached to you. <laughs> Up, upload your brain to some sort of an artificial reality and live forever? Doesn't that sound trendy? <laughs> it's a cool idea. Lifespan extension. Ooh, so you would be into uploading your brain to uh, artificial reality? Not, not per se, but an artificial body, maybe. What would you do with your students if they were basically able to upload all of their test information to their computer chips, basically like Google in their brain? I'd be scared, because <laughs> who knows what else is in there. No, I am not into any sort of virtual reality world. I would never want my brain uplinked into anything permanently. I don't want anybody to have any sort of manipulative control. Bills that might put some restrictions on the government's surveillance are being held up in Congress by the leadership of both parties. So Jakari Jackson takes a look at what's happening on the streets and how the surveillance state is stepping up its game. We're used to being watched from above downtown, but now officers will be getting video of us on the street level. They basically described it as a small object that you wouldn't be able to tell apart from something like this metal box. We're always out there. Uh, we're always watching uh, whether you think we are or not. APD hopes to one day partner with businesses around here, get them to purchase the mobile cameras, giving the department access to the video. The goal is to one day have responding patrol officers be able to pull up surveillance video from anywhere around town. Well, isn't that great? Recently, InfoWars traveled to the New York, New Jersey area to expose the police state surrounding the Super Bowl. Aside from the TSA checking bags in the train stations, as well as rifle-toting guards, we saw plenty of surveillance cameras just like we have in the city of Austin. And if you love your Fourth Amendment being trifled with, you'll say that the cameras stop crime and make you feel safe. You can keep on feeling safe, because in case you missed it, Here's a viral YouTube video of an attack that happened just blocks away from the Austin Police Department. This was a few weeks ago. And I will say for the most part, personally, when I go downtown, I feel pretty safe and not threatened by anything. But, you know, these things can happen. People have this notion that if there are more cameras around, they'll be safer. Well, I went to that area to check it out for myself. And there's a camera right there. Local news reports that APD has over 40 cameras in the downtown area. The surveillance state is growing. In the Boston area, buses are now live streaming to police courtesy of Homeland Security. There is no audio, but there are also cameras on the exterior of the buses. The system cost $6.9 million. All of it came from Homeland Security. Right now, about 10 buses are outfitted, but by the summer, more than 225 will have these sophisticated cameras. 80 transit police cruisers will soon have touch screens like this, so officers can look live right into a bus that they may be following. A system like that could definitely have its uses, but I'm not one to discount the use of violating your privacy. And with the Austin police chief saying that he wants to use public cameras for police use, there will be little privacy left in downtown Austin, Texas. We know that there's a tremendous number of cameras in the, in the private sector, and right now we're working to try to get those private cameras in public places tied into our system. You can find more reports at InfoWars.com. We're always out there. Uh, we're always watching uh, whether you think we are or not.
introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formula fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Welcome back. What we have for you next is the second in a series of videos from Dr. Group and Anthony Gucciardi giving you some simple and easy health tips that you can do. This one about cleaner air. So let's talk about cleaning the air in our environment, which is actually key and most people aren't aware of that. Well, I mean, air is probably one of the most important, and this is my health secret number two, is to breathe clean air as much as you can. I mean, we obviously live in a toxic world. I mean, the air is contaminated. We have the chemtrail fallout. You know, we have radiation in the air now coming over from Fukushima, and some sources are even saying the government agencies are spraying radiation into the air now, adding it to the chemtrails so they can blame it on Fukushima and use Fukushima as a scapegoat. But we have PCBs in the air. We have all different types of fossil fuels and contaminants, VOCs, volatile organic compounds. I mean, inside air is actually 10 times more toxic than outside air. And we have a decrease in the amount of oxygen that we're breathing. Oxygen is the main component of life. I mean, we need to breathe oxygen. And in some cities, the oxygen content now is as low as 6 to 9%, where if we look you know, 25, 30, 40, 50 years ago, we were up around the 26% oxygen. Oxygen is perfect because it splits, creates reactive oxygen species, and that neutralizes toxins. You know, ozone is effective at neutralizing toxins, but we lost a lot of the ozone too. So we're breathing in 30,000 breaths a day of what we should be breathing in clean air. But when you have people that are sleeping on these tempur mattresses that are breathing in all these chemical fire retardants and, and newly painted rooms and uh, all the mold and the mildew and the pet dander. Our lungs are taking a beating and we're not able to get, we're breathing in chemicals and we're not breathing in enough oxygen. So what I recommend people do, the first step is to go to a local nursery and ask the person, what are the best indoor plants for that area in which they live. I recommend people put three plants in each room of their house. Number one, plants are going to naturally absorb toxins, ferns especially do that, and they're also going to absorb CO2. You know, if you have a lot of people in your house and you're breathing the CO2 that comes out of your mouth, the plants will absorb the CO2 and then plants produce oxygen. So the plants actually help clean the air inside the home. 
Another thing I recommend doing is using a high quality air purification system in your home. I personally use one that produces ionized hydroperoxides by a company called RGF. It's called the Remy unit. But also you can avoid and restrict the amount of chemical use in your house. You know, don't use air fresheners that are going to be putting out chemicals. Next time you, you know, get your carpet done, don't put a bunch of chemicals on your carpet. You really need to go through your whole house, get rid of all the cleaning supplies that are toxic chemicals that you and your kids are breathing on a daily basis. The home should be a very clean place and should be an environmentally friendly place especially when you're talking about the air that you're breathing on a daily basis. I've always gotten headaches when I go and use artificial cleaning products or when I was, you know, in, in somewhere where they were using artificial cleaning products and I switched to 100% organic, the best I could find, oftentimes from wild crafted ingredients, which are sometimes even better. And now I realize it smells good and it makes me feel good. It's like almost aromatherapy level. <clears throat> and the difference is that what I've found is when you walk down the aisles even for some grocery stores, the toxic cleaning supplies, they're just like giving me migraines now when I inhale them because I guess the sensitivity level now of my body is such so much higher because I haven't been exposed to that for so long. And we're going to get into specifically detoxing the number of toxins that you experience on a daily basis and also avoiding GMOs in ways that you may not be familiar with, such as avoid, avoiding them through supplementation and everything like that. So we'll get into that in the next video. And I think it's absolutely essential to stay tuned because we're going to talk about the five health secrets you're not aware of. Another couple things, just real fast, is the Himalayan crystal salt lamps work really good to kind of uh, put salt into the air to kill bacteria and viruses. And also aromatherapy diffusers are another replacement for the toxic air fresheners that people can use. So the combination of all those things should uh, clean the air in the house fairly well, especially when you sleep and you should notice, you know, changes. Uh, health changes right away. Well, that's it for the nightly news. Join us again tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. The Army is very proud of the new American city they've built to practice martial law. The government really can do something quickly. They built this 300-acre city in just two years. Compare that to how long they take in your city just to build a road. But then they did have $96 million of your tax money to play with. To transition from an army of execution, doing what we've got to do, to an army of preparation to be ready uh, for what comes next. This is a place uh, where we can be creative and you can come up with solutions for problems that we don't even know we have yet. The public may not know the problem yet because they haven't yet executed the false flag event that they'll use to openly activate martial law, but the military has been creating scenarios where they can justify a move against small town America for quite some time. And they've made it clear that their enemy is gun owners, veterans, those who want a small limited government, and Christians. The UK Telegraph reported that the town was complete with a subway, railroad, football field, and mosque. Mosque? That's not a mosque. That's a small town Christian church with a steeple and Gothic windows. Mosques have minarets, rounded arches, etc. It's not that they've kept the current military's attitude toward Christians a secret either. It was the U.S. Army that conflated the Ku Klux Klan with mainstream Christian groups like the American Family Association or the Family Research Council, calling these mainstream evangelical groups hate groups. In just the last year, an official Army email and briefings at both Fort Hood, Texas and Camp Shelby, Mississippi attacked Christian groups and said they don't share Army values. Most recently, we've seen a FOIA request that showed last year's training scenario in Ohio identified gun owners and people who believe in limited government as the enemy. And then there's retired Colonel Kevin Benson, currently teaching at Fort Leavenworth, who spelled it out clearly in his vision of the future. 
When the leaders of the group hold a press conference to announce their goals, they invoke the Declaration of Independence, and they argue that the current form of the federal government is not deriving its just powers from the consent of the governed, but is actually destructive to these ends. Therefore, they say the people can alter or abolish the existing government and replace it with another. And while mainstream politicians and citizens react with alarm, right, with alarm to the words of the Declaration of Independence, the Tea Party insurrectionists in South Carolina enjoy a groundswell of support from other Tea Party groups, militias, racist organizations.